I'm Chris, and today we're going to make a bat house. Let's do this real quick. One of the real reasons I needed to make this bat house was my wife. She went into the hallway, there was a bat flying around in there. She went into the kitchen the one time, there was a bat flying around in there. She went into the basement to put laundry in the, the washing machine. There was a bat hanging in the, in the washing machine. And then just recently, we were in the living room, my son my wife, and my wife and I, watching TV. And all of a sudden, a bat was flying around in the living room. My son and my wife went hysterical, threw a blanket over them, took a couple tries, caught the bat midair, put them outside. And now just recently, my sister who lives upstairs had a bat in her kitchen at night, and then the next morning she had another bat. So obviously the bats are getting a little too close to home. It was okay when they were in the barn. It was okay when they were in the, the shed. That wasn't an issue. Even the attic I didn't mind so much. But now that they're getting inside the house, I have to make a more comfortable place for them and hopefully deter them from getting inside the house probably the first one I'm going to start with. Now that's going to be the back piece. So I want something that's going to be fairly sturdy. This one happens to be 27. So I'm going to rip this down to nine and a quarter. Simply rip that on the table saw. The next step we're going to do is make the front and that's 18 and three quarters by nine and one quarter. Now for the ceiling piece and what we're going to do is measure about inch and a half over and make a mark. And then same thing from the other side. We'll measure about inch and a half over and then we want to measure an inch and a quarter down we're going to cut that piece out and we should end up with something like that everything's nine and a quarter by uh, there's three that are eight two that are 14. depending on the thickness of the wood you're using you could get a couple more in there cut about three to four pieces that are eight inches by nine and a quarter so what i'm going to do now is kind of mark off where these partitions are going to go I'm going to make a saw cut in here just so that they can slide right in place. So I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch up and that's going to be my first spacing. And then I'm going to measure another eighth of an inch, so seven eighths up, and that's going to be my saw cut. So right now that leaves me with one, two, three, three quarter inch gaps. Now your bat house might be a little bit different depending on the thickness of the wood that you're using. We're going to do an inch and a half up this time. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark my lines out. I don't have to be too exact with this. I don't think the bats are going to be that picky. But you know what? I can make it perfect. They're either going to take to it or they're going to keep going in my barn and in my attic and my garage and my basement and my house and my hallway. So let's put it this way. I'm making this bat house so that they stay out of my house because my wife has not been having fun lately. So you get the basic idea where everything is going to go. I'm going to go ahead and take that to my table saw, lower my saw height, barely cut through this. It's just going to give me enough of a groove just to kind of hold the pieces in place. So I want to end up with something like this to where my pieces fit right inside there. What I kind of screwed up on is my saw blade, the kerf of it is an eighth of an inch, but the eighth inch plywood really isn't eighth inch. It's a little bit more, about three sixteenths or so. So the only thing I'm doing is moving my fence over right to my next line that I made, making my cut. Then move my fence a sixteenth of an inch. And then when you're all done cutting, you should end up with something like this. And we also have to glue on the front piece and the back piece. Now for the back piece, I'm going to go ahead and measure about four inches from the bottom up. Draw a line. And then within that four inches, I'm going to cut a bunch of grooves with my table saw. From that four inch mark, I'm going to go ahead and lay my front piece down and make a mark at the top. Now that mark at the top is just going to kind of be a reference point. My roof is actually going to sit a little bit higher depending on the length for the side pieces. Now I want to determine where my ceiling is going to go in relation to my back and front piece. The ceiling doesn't go all the way to the top. It's probably going to come down a little bit. I'm going to take one of my longest pieces, which is one of the 14 inch pieces. We'll just do two inches from the bottom and then make a mark at the top. And I'm going to draw two marks because I'm going to cut it out just a little bit, just enough to make a little bit of a groove to fit that in there. I'm just going to eyeball it up and make my cut. Now, remember, I'm just making a little groove on my back piece so that the ceiling will fit in there just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and make the grooves on the back piece for the landing. I'm going to make them a little shallower. They don't need to be that thick. My side pieces are going to be two feet long by ten and a quarter inch wide. I have the front and the back kind of clamped together with the ceiling in there. I'm laying it on top of one of the side pieces. Draw a line for my roof angle. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that, transfer it to the other one, and cut it again. Now an easy way for me to figure out this angle is just to take my square, put it against my table saw, then put this mark 
right on the edge of my square, put that mark right on the other edge of my square, kind of hold that piece down, go ahead and bring in my miter gauge, match that angle, tighten it up, and then go ahead and cut it. And we will go ahead and transfer that line to the other board. I'm going to go ahead and use this wood brass to kind of scuff everything up. I'm going to put a glove on just because I don't want to bust my knuckles on there. Well, after you dry fit everything, now it's time to glue everything together. I'm just using a simple indoor, outdoor, waterproof and paintable uh, sealant. And now that I have some caulking on this piece, start putting our parti partitions in. I went ahead and put some silicone on the back piece. I have the ceiling part resting on some bricks and I kind of shimmed it up to the height I needed for the back part and I kind of just clamped everything together uh, just enough to hold for a little bit these clamps up here the wood was moving a little bit too much and the spacers were falling out so I clamped those together now we can go ahead and add the sides to it I figured it would be a little easier just to lay this thing right on its side get everything kind of positioned where I want it and then go ahead and throw a bunch of silicone on it I can throw some silicone up here before I put my other side piece on. Put the other side piece on top. I'm trying to be more than generous with the silicone just because I'm really not going to screw this together. We can go ahead and clamp this together. Okay, we'll let that sit for a little bit and dry. Well, now that the sides are dry, we can go ahead and take all this off and remove all the clamps. Now when you're putting everything together, make sure you have everything lined up. I screwed up and I have a gap up here so that when I put my roof on here, it's going to end up being a gap in here. So I had to make a little filler piece to close in that gap. That's my little oversight, but no big deal. This project doesn't have to be exactly perfect. I'm going to go ahead and put a good healthy amount on, especially along the inside edge because I'm not going to be able to get in there and make sure there's a nice bead and I want this house to heat up. The bats need about 85 to 100 degrees inside here. Just kind of center it up the best you can. And now we can go ahead and take this apart and paint it. And you can get a little glimpse inside there of what all the partitions look like. To make it a little easier to hang this bat house to the side of my barn I'm going to go ahead and screw this piece of wood into the wall and then I'll simply hang the bat house right on top of there and then I'll screw the remaining screws into it. This way I don't have to hold the bat house up there and struggle putting the screws in. I'm just going to simply rip this in half with my blade at an angle. A couple things to keep in mind with your bat house. One, you want to paint it dark, meaning black or brown. You want the inside to get to about 85 to 100 degrees for the bats. Two, the inside partitions need to be roughed up so the bats can hang on to it. Three, it needs to be hung high. 15 to 20 feet high. You have to remember bats can't take off from the ground. They have to climb up, drop down, and then fly. They gotta drop down about three to four feet to get lift. You also want to hang your bat house on your southeast corner of your, your house, your property, your barn, wherever you're hanging it. You want it to get as much sunlight as it can, especially early morning sunlight, so this thing can warm up to the temperature it needs to be. You want to make this inviting for the bats to deter the bats from the location that they're in now. It's been said you can use mothballs, but bats are a creature of habit. They like to go back to the same spot they've been roosting in before, so you really need to make this inviting. I made this one out of scrap plywood that I had laying around. I would almost recommend making it out of half inch plywood, enough to really get some screws in there. This is a large bat house. It has a lot of compartments to hold a lot of bats. It has a nursery in it to help promote more bats. The smaller bat houses, you have to remember, really just attract the males, and only a few males. I wanted to attract a whole bunch of bats, and I wanted to attract them, or deter them from going in my house. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Definitely share this video with your friends, and check out some of my other videos.